Hi, everyone, and welcome back to JSA TV and JSA TV podcast, where we're coming to you today live from the floor of ITW 2024 here in National Harbor. Uh, I'm Barb Mitchell from JSA, and I'm joined by Scott Silently DeFore. Silent Great. D. DeFore. Yep. Yeah, Happy to be you. here. Thank you. Uh, CEO of Liquid Star. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So great to see you in person. We've chatted uh, in the past virtually. First time seeing each other face to face and really excited to be here and, and uh, give our audience the opportunity to hear a little bit about Liquid Star. Would you mind Definitely. Us? Yeah, sure. So at Liquid Star, what we do is we make solar powered micro data centers that have their own electricity, water and Internet built in. And we place them in emerging market areas and they either work for remote businesses or for remote communities. And we sell the excess electricity, water and Internet to the remote communities at a discount. In addition to providing access um, for, for these local communities to be able to use large language models as like an educational tutor, uh, nurse, that type of thing. So really moving them ahead and, and kind of helping them leapfrog a lot of other uh, developed countries. That's amazing. I love everything about what you just said. I love the model that you have. And and I think, you know, I want to point out that um, sustainability is a, a key piece, obviously, of what you're doing and offering. And uh, we were able to have you included in the Greener Data Volume 2. Uh, can you talk about that? You contributed a chapter. You're now a best-selling author. <laughs> Tell Sweet. us about your chapter. Yes. Yeah, so our chapter is really about how you can use green data centers to actually solve multiple SDGs. And part of why the data centers need to be green is that you're in extremely remote areas, right? Yeah. So you don't have the traditional grid. Um, it's expensive even if you want to get diesel fuel for a generator to get out there. So you really can only rely, at the moment at least, on solar electricity to power these uh, micro data centers. And the other part about it is by, by solving multiple SDGs, solving these data centers, you actually have an opportunity to change the business model um, around data centers. So we're using solar electricity to power the data center, pull water from the air using atmospheric water generation to cool the data center, and then obviously using internet and Starlink um, to do that in remote areas, and then providing all of that to the local people that live around our micro data centers or waypoints, um, as we call them. So it's been pretty amazing to see, you know, how people have used yeah. the the micro data center. And a lot of that and some of those images are are in the, the, the chapter in the book. Amazing. We have to read it. To yeah, exactly. More. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, as you're speaking and you, you touched on some of this, but just I can only imagine the impact that this would make on some emerging markets. And so can you expand on that a little bit more just to, you know, sort of the role of green data centers in these emerging markets, the impact that, that it has? Yeah, I think it's going to be a tremendous impact. So the stat that we like to use is Africa has 17 percent of the world's population, but less than one percent of the world's data center. And most of those 1% are actually in South Africa. So uh, we personally think that the African data center market is going to increase tremendously. But also there are a lot of people who are moving in that I don't think have tried to do infrastructure projects in Africa. It's extremely difficult. Yeah. Um, some countries do have excess electricity capacity, but the, the grid is actually very unreliable, which is what you need. So, And, and the last problem that we're seeing is... In fact, when people do build data centers, a lot of them are empty. So with our approach of these like modular micro data centers, um, we're able to kind of get around a lot of those issues that other people experience because we're solving multiple problems. So the governments are kind of happy, uh, you know, for us to deploy. But bigger picture, the main driving motivation is that, you know, we can't have a repeat of the previous, you know, couple hundred years where all of the resources are just being extracted uh, from Africa and there's yeah. no like infrastructure being built. And a good example of that is, you know, uh, we left our internet on for free one day and 30% of the internet was used to access tic TikTok, 100 oh, gigabytes wow. in 36 hours. Wow. And it really asks a question, you, you know, the data is being extracted from this rural uh, location, going back to the TikTok servers, wherever they are, and then that information is being used to like sell stuff, train models, that type of thing. So really, 
these countries are starting to think a lot about uh, data sovereignty and these types of issues. Yeah. So we think it's going to be a growing market. Hopefully, we're, we're, we're obviously still a startup, but the bigger picture is like we can't allow people in the remote corners of the world to be left behind, whether it's from electricity, water, and internet access, or access to the latest uh, AI models and that type of thing. So true. It, it can change people's lives, you know, for the better, right? Definitely. And, definitely. and hopefully not for the worse. Which exactly. Is the opposite, exactly. You know, exactly. The other angle of that, but. So what's on the horizon for you at Liquid, Liquid Star? Yeah, so next we're planning to kind of build our Waypoint V4. Um, we're working with USAID uh, and a large oil and gas company to determine where best, uh, separately, to determine where best to deploy, deploy that version for. Um, definitely going to be in either East Africa or West Africa. I know those are two very different places. But yeah, we're, we're very excited about that. Um, you know, we, we really have... I think in, right now we have really deployed probably for the first time ever like a large language model in a completely remote area in Africa to the point where they have access to something that people here in the U.S. you know might not have access to. So yeah. our main goal is to expand that to as many people as possible as quickly as possible because the, the race for AI and data centers as well is exponential. And at the same time, there's going to be real questions about the energy makeup of those data centers. So if we're we're trying to get ahead of all of that um, right now. Yeah, amazing. I find this so fascinating. I wish we had hours to talk about this. I have twenty more questions, but but alas, <laughs> our time is is uh, short. And you know, I just really want to thank you for for coming and, and speaking with our audience, contributing to to greener data. Everything you have to say is is really important, you know, for for our industry, for for the world. I have to say. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be a part of it and happy to be here. So yeah. again, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Until next time, happy networking.